we're going to go ahead and uh, start the September 9th meeting of the Great Town Charter Commission. Um, and as soon as Lisa is ready, we'll take the recalls of our vote. It's called you know, roll call. Jim Fazier. Ted Bowman. Here. Susan Dolan. Here. Janet Emerson. Here. Lisa Emerson. Here. Jason Green. Here. Steve Gunther. Here. Sandra Arnold. Here. Michael McDonough. Here. Charlotte Wilson. Here. Mark Moore. Here. Mary Jane Van Buster. Here. Greg Walters. Um, I did hear from uh, Greg. Has anybody heard about Jim, or is he just possibly going to be late? We don't know. He may be coaching or something. Okay. I don't know. Right. Okay. Right. I know about Craig. All right. Um, we're going to open up for public comment. This is where we allow anyone from the general public to have an opportunity to speak regarding the issues of the charter uh, from what uh, has already been passed, so their ideas for upcoming articles and section. Each individual will have three minutes, uh, and we have allowed for a total of 21 minutes for this uh, section. So, if anybody would like to speak, and I see two people in the audience, uh, so if either or or both want to speak, we can just take a turn. Somebody can come up forward first. You're both good? Okay, super. Any other, anybody else that would like to speak? Okay, then. Okay. Um, and then, um, as far as the chair uh, goes, um, I'd like to address uh, a couple of things uh, before we get started. And uh, uh, one of those has to do with um, some things that, uh, from people that I've run into, obviously around Raytown, as I do. My normal things, and uh, I've been trying to uh, educate them as to some of the things that the charter has gone through already. Uh, I think the hot topic also hit Randy's papers, but uh, uh, so I just want to clarify a couple things. Um, the that section was actually uh, composed by myself with some input from uh, Jason, and it was after a lot of research that was done, so it wasn't an arbitrary decision to uh, not include uh, in the city administrator's uh, uh, section as of yet a, a chance for an extension to the non-residency or actual a waiver of the non-residency. Uh, we, I think Jason and I reviewed some 26 or 7 uh, out of 39. Yeah, I've actually had an opportunity to review more. Okay. I'm motivated to review more. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, so we, we, we actually spent a lot of time researching that, and uh, when, we, uh, when we put together the final copy of this, I just want to let everybody know that, um, you know, we based it on the facts that we found out through the MML, because the MML actually has in their set own uh, uh, model charter on, on page 24, information on city manager, and the model charter actually calls for the city administrator to be a uh, resident of the city, and the only thing that they actually grant or possibly would grant would be an extension, but not even, but not, so they do not suggest a waiver uh, to it. So if the MML doesn't, and the, uh, the I would say probably at least, as far as we know right now, 80 to 90 percent of the other charters, and we haven't read them all, uh, actually follow this same guideline as far as they'll either waive, uh, well, first, the, some of them will not even give a, an extension, some of them will not even give a waiver, some will give just a, uh, an extension, and some will just give a waiver, but the waivers are in the neighborhood of two thirds or three fourths of the uh, actual board of aldermen or city council members that are voting. Um, 
there's every opportunity to still include language in this because uh, like this into the charter, uh, if it's so moved by the citizen uh, comments and so forth, because this is just a draft still. What we're trying to write is a draft, and we will eventually go back through some of the items that may be of contention and try to address them uh, maybe a little bit more. But uh, again, it's just like writing an essay. You come up with a, a, a draft, and then you revise it, and you try to make a final copy before you actually put it out there. So I just kind of caution everybody that uh, the information we're trying to put together right now is still a draft of a charge. And there's always a possibility that things can be revised from what we approve and, and go from there. Uh, but the consensus is, and even what we found in our own ordinance is that uh, this is one of the uh, rate time ordinances too that also includes the fact that the city administrator uh, would have to have residency in Missouri. So again, we're just continually following what is already currently on the books in the city of Raytown also. So uh, I don't uh, want to presume anything, but I, I just want to make sure all the facts were heard uh, because I don't see this as being something that uh, should be a contention. Uh, the vote was pretty clear uh, last uh, meeting. It was a 10 to 2 vote. Uh, that uh, uh, to me is not a a vote that would say we were divided, but it was a pretty majority vote that uh, uh, all agreed on the same thing. And uh, lastly, uh, I just, I, again, I want to give everybody an opportunity to come up and be heard. Uh, so if there's any uh, citizens of Ray Town that want to follow through on this, uh, we'll be more than happy to talk to them here. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and then I'll go to the secretary. I have no history report, just uh, an approval of the minutes. All right, do I have a motion? Uh, I did go through the minutes again very thoroughly. I did not find one instance of something that wasn't as per what we reviewed uh, last uh, session. Uh, and Unless somebody else has found something, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve it. Thank you, Jim. Second? Second. Thank you, Mike. Any further discussion on that? Okay. Okay. Uh, take a vote, please. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Ms. Emerson, yes. Jason Green, yes. Marvin Moore, yes. Steve Gunther, yes. Janet Emerson, yes. Sandra Harwell, yes. Charlotte Nelson, yes. Susan Dolan, yes. Ted Bowman, yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. um, we're going to go to the Treasury's report. Anything updated, Mark? Nothing's been updated, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm still saying that. Uh, Seeing that there was no change, I don't think we'll need to vote on any of that as of, as of this point. Um, <coughs> I guess we'll go with old, some old business. Um, if, if we go back to section 310, and I know this is a little bit tedious, but I'd like to clean up section 3.10. I did some additional research, uh, and it might not be in your packet, but I, I gave it to Lisa, and I'll let her read it. Um, a lot of the other charters that I reviewed uh, actually separated uh, our Section G into two separate divisions, uh, one of them being um, the effective date of the uh, legislation, and then also a second one on authentication and recording. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'll have Lisa read each one of those, and then we'll some comments on it. I don't think it's in, actually in your minutes or anything else because I don't think it was, uh, we both didn't have a chance to follow up and get you this, but I think it's pretty simple how, it was, how it's been recorded in other charters. And so if this uh, is something we can agree to, I'd like to get it cleaned up before we move 
on to some other stuff. So, Lisa, could you read Section G, please, the 3.10? 3.10 Legislative Proceedings G. Effective Date Every adopted ordinance and resolution shall become effective immediately upon passage, adoption, and approval by the Mayor, including deemed approval by the Mayor, failing to either sign or disapprove the same within seven days of receipt as provided, <clears throat> as provided in Article, Section, whatever it will be, or any later date specified therein. No, uh, and again, this is real consistent with uh, other charters. So, uh, if there's uh, some comment or something that we might be able to do from, uh, with this, I mean, she can read it again. What's the essence of the change? Uh, well, again, we never did finish 3.10G. We finished this was the discussion about what it means. Correct. The despite of the veto. That's correct. I believe so. Well, no, I, I, I know it doesn't have a veto in it, but that's the reason that we went. That's correct. And I found in the other charters, Ted, that uh, the other charters were very specific not to address the veto thing in this. Uh, motion to approve. Okay. All right, we, have, we do have a motion to approve Section G. Uh, she'll read it again. Uh, is there somebody that might want to second it? Jason, thank you. We will reread G. Yes. Three point ten G. <clears throat> effective date. Every adopted ordinance and resolution shall become effective immediately upon passage, adoption, and approval by the mayor including deemed approved by the mayor failing to either sign or disapprove the same within seven days of receipt as provided in article whatever, section whatever, or any later date specified therein. All right, any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. I didn't see any, standing, did you have something? Oh, okay. I just saw you reach. All right, uh, then we'll take a vote. Michael McDonough. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yes. Janasia? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Steve Guthrie? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. I believe that was an unanimous uh, decision. Thank you for that. Now she'll read uh, uh, section 3.10. H, uh, which deals with uh, authentic, authentic, authentication and recording. Sorry. 3.10H, authentication and recording. All ordinances and resolutions adopted by the Board of Aldermen shall be authenticated by the signature of the Mayor and City Clerk. The City Clerk shall then record the adopted ordinance or resolution per article section. And, and that article in the section she's referring to is the article in the section that's already been approved as far as how the city clerk will record the information uh, that's been uh, uh, approved at the uh, Board of Alderman meetings. Thank you, Jen. You have a second? Second. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Jim Major? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Again, not hearing any no's, I think it's a unanimous approval. I appreciate that. Uh, that finishes uh, Section 3, uh, or Article 3 at this time. Uh, we'll move on to Article 5, which we're currently in, but uh, at our last meeting, uh, Ted made a, uh, uh, a uh, uh, one to clarify uh, 
section 5.3. Uh, and if uh, Ted, you can make that clarification. So, Chairman, I move that we that we alter 5.3 subsection A to be approved simply by removing the word clarity. All right. In, uh, along with the uh, that, that being the end of the motion, the purpose being to clarify the exact same thing we cleared up with the uh, city administrator by removing the uh, additive administration. Correct. And this is something we talked about last meeting, but apparently never finished up. So we have a motion. Anyone would like to second that motion to remove clerical from that description? Second. Thank you, Susan. Any other discussion? We'll take a vote then. 5.3a, I'm just reading the first sentence. The city clerk shall be appointed on the basis of their qualifications. All right, we'll take a vote. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yeah. Mark Moore? Yes. Jim Major? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Harbaugh? Michael McDonough? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Again, seeing the answer of approval, I thank you on that. We'll now uh, begin again in our review of the city administrator. Uh, if everybody remembers, we went through under his powers and duties in the first five uh, of those. We'll start with item number six uh, under the duties of the city administrator. And I'll just read them and um, we'll go through one by one. Uh, six is submit to the Board of Aldermen and make available to the people a complete report on the fin finances and administrative activities of the city as of the end of each fiscal year. Motion to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Jim Major? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Motion carries 12 to 0, number 7. And again, this list is not an exhaustive list. If in the future anybody else comes up with any known duties or hours that we need to include on this, uh, we can always add them. So I'm just going through the ones that I, I have found through other charters and in the MML. So number seven is keep the Board of Aldermen fully advised as to the financial condition and future needs of the city. Any other discussion? Any discussion? Seeing no. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Mary Mc yeah. Michael McTonough? Yes. Uh, Mark Moore? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Charlie Wilson? Yeah. Jim Ager? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. This is getting a little tedious for each one of these. <laughs> uh, exactly, and that's what takes so long. I mean, we spent some time on this. Um, if anybody has something to do with a specific uh, duty or power, um, 
as I read it, I'm going to read all the rest of them. And if there's something that stands out that somebody wants to address, we'll address that individual one. But I'm hoping we can just approve the rest of these and move on to compensation. So, all right. Uh, make recommendations to the Board of Aldermen concerning the affairs of the city and facilitate the work of the Board of Aldermen in developing city policy. That's number eight. Number nine, make such other reports as the Board of Aldermen may require concerning operations. Number ten, provide staff support services for the board for the mayor and board of aldermen. I actually added board of after Ann. Okay. Uh, number eleven, assist the board of aldermen in developing long-term goals for the city and strategy strategies to implement these goals. Number twelve, encourage and provide staff support for regional and intergovernmental cooperation. Number 13, promote partnerships among the Board of Aldermen and staff and citizens in developing public policy and building a sense of community. Keep an updated list on file in the office of the city clerk designating qualified individuals that may exercise the powers to perform the duties of the city administrator during a vacancy of their position. That may or could, yes. Did I read it wrong? I'm sorry. Thank you for pointing that out. So, could is the word. Um, and then, item 15, perform such other duties as are specified in this charter or may be required by the Board of Aldermen. Does anybody have any items that they'd like to discuss further? Excuse me? Susan is, uh, that's actually item 15 where they have opened that up to certain other things. So what we were just trying to do was be a little bit uh, more specific in separating out concerning operations from other things that the Board of Aldermen may request of the City Administrator. I see how 15 does cover that. Thank you. All right. Any other board decision, uh, discussion? Motion to approve. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Michael seconds. All right, we will take a vote. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Janasia? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Again, if anybody else has any other things that they know might be uh, need to be included, uh, I will just bring them to the board between now and the time we get a chance to review this a second time. All right, we'll move on to um, Section C, Compensation. Uh, under compensation, it says the Board of Aldermen shall fix the city administrator's comprehensive compensation plan by ordinance, but no, no ordinance, ordinance changing any such compensation shall become effective for the city administrator until the commencement of a new contract term in office, nor shall be made uh, written 120 days prior to a new contract term. Uh, the 120 days is a little bit different from the 180 days that we have specified earlier for uh, the Board of Aldermen or the Mayor. 
And I just thought that in the case of the city administrator, since they're actually done by contract, uh, there should, it should be actually a little bit less time, but that's open for discussion. Okay. Yes. Yes, John. So if the city administrator is doing a review and does really well and the board of aldermen wanted to give you a raise, then that raise can't go into effect until the end of that contract. Because that's, I mean, that's when it's got a three-year contract. So as the city administrator, you couldn't get a raise each year. You would only have to wait until the end of your time that turn that contract up and then get one, correct? Well, I don't, I don't think that's really what it says because it's based on the compensation of the plan that's approved per contract. I mean, that's that's the way I'm reading it. Uh, so, if in the contract that the city signs with the city administrator, it allows for a uh, increase uh, in that period of that, during that three years, the only time it can't is 120 days prior to the new contract. Which, because it would be renegotiated in that new contract, is that I mean, compensation plan language does not require a single set annual fee for every year. Right. I mean, I hope I, I hope I wrote that right. Unless the plan. But is, isn't that position vacant? Doesn't that position uh, right. hold up? Well, if you cost right. living allowance every year. If you, if you write it in, yeah. I guess my concern would be that if the, let's say every June you're supposed to get a personnel review and a discussion of increased compensation, and the review doesn't happen until October or maybe December, then you miss a large portion there. As far as COVID virus. Well, but that's not our fault. <laughs> I mean, it, and, and, and if it's in the contract, it says each June you should get the review and you don't get it, then what happens? Well, I think in that case, it would be up to the individual to make note to the Board of Aldermen that they haven't received their review and that they wouldn't request it. I mean, I think that's pretty standard contract. Provided it's even for the contract. Right. So, you have a compensation plan right now, I believe, for a couple of elected officials that says that they will get increases right, right, every right, year. Right, right. Right. And there's no condition on that, it just happens. And you could certainly put conditions on that. But the compensation plan will have that written in. Well, I think all they're trying to say is that when you have a compensation plan, can't decide to change it so the contract right, right right but you have a, a you're talking about elected officials and then you're talking about the staff and this would be about the staff right in, in that case it's a, it's a flat out signed contractual agreement right and then this is just denying the option to renegotiate that contract until it expires in, in other words if i'm the city administrator and it's through your term and year and a half through the term, I decided I've got another job offer, and I want to give you that, unless you change the terms of my contract, this prohibits that. And, and Charlotte, I did try to write this based on what the current current uh, relationship with the city administrator and the city is. I mean, and if I've worded it in a way that might be confusing, do you have a suggested alternative? <laughs> And I do believe we have it right in three-year terms contracts. But we, from my, my review, that's what we've been doing. Okay. I got it. Okay. I make a motion to approve. I second. Oh, we do have a motion on the floor to approve and a second. Any 
any other discussion? Yes. Yes. What's the word right before the number 120? Yeah. Written. I'm sorry. I just want to be sure I wasn't just reading this. <laughs> All right, we'll make that correction. And I'll have Lisa re read it. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. Other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll take a vote. And again, Charlotte, if you do find something that's different, we still have an opportunity to right. change this. Okay. Uh, 5.5c compensation. The Board of Aldermen shall fix the City Administrator's compensation plan by ordinance, but no ordinance changing any such compensation shall become effective for the City Administrator until the commencement of a new contract term in office, nor shall be made within 120 days prior to a new contract term. Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Mary Jane Van Yes. Jim Asher? Yes. By Michael McDonough. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Sandra Hobo. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Section C does pass 11 to 1, if I'm correct with that number. All right, we'll move on to D, term and removal. Uh, it's, it's written, the city administrator may serve for an indefinite, it should be indefinite, number of, well, yeah. what I actually wrote because it, is, it didn't get transcribed the way I had actually written it. And I'll uh, see if this makes sense. The city administrator may serve for an indefinite number of three-year contract terms and for as long as they possess all the qualifications for the office. What's that? Yeah, I know. I know. It just didn't get again. Transcribe. Does anybody have issues with that one? Yes. Uh, the city administrator may serve for an indefinite number of three year contract terms and for as long as they possess all qualifications for the office. The city administrator may be removed by a two thirds vote of the entire Board of Aldermen on its initiative. shall 
hold office at the pleasure of the Board of Aldermen and may be removed by a two-thirds vote of the entire Board of Aldermen on its admission. Is that accurate? I think so, yeah. Read it back again. The city administrator may serve for an indefinite number of three-year contract terms and for as long as they possess all qualifications for the office. The city administrator shall hold office at the pleasure of the Board of Aldermen and may be removed by a two-thirds vote of the entire Board of Aldermen on its initiative. And that's what I've got now. All right, any other discussion then on uh, item D? Anybody want to add anything else? Again, I think we've been trying to make it consistent. Yeah, Jim, yes, sir. I, I guess my question would be is, he's not elected official, he's hired under contract, and should they just choose to remove him, they could, but they would have to pay his full contract. Provided that's part of the contract, right? Which typically it is, right? Because unless he's done something to warrant being removed from his job, correct? Okay. And I'm assuming that that would be specified in the contract, but he could or couldn't do. And well, the board could choose not to put that in the contract at all. But you would have a hard time hiring that. Yeah. So you do yeah. that. Right? Yeah. But it's pretty clear in his current contract how that was done. So. Again, we, we're not trying to define this contract here, we're just trying to set some guidance. Motion to approve. Thank you, Janet. Any other discussion? Second. Or motion, second. Okay, second. Lisa, can you re read that, please, as you have it? 5.5D, term and removal. The city administrator may serve for an indefinite number of three-year contract terms and for as long as they possess all qualifications for the office. The city, administration, the city administrator shall hold office at the pleasure of the Board of Aldermen and may be removed by a two-thirds vote of the entire Board of Aldermen on its initiative. Any other discussion? I do have a question. Um, yes. Before when we wrote entire Board of Aldermen, were we not changing that to make sure it wasn't an issue of every board of aldermen had to be present to do that? Did we phrase it a different way? Or is this what you want to? Uh, I'm not sure that it shouldn't be the entire board. Oh, that's fine. Then. Yeah, so uh, on something like this, I think it should be. Yeah. All right, we have a motion, a second, and we've had a second reading. Seeing no other discussion, we'll take a vote. Jim Major? Yeah. Lisa Emerson Pass, Charlotte Nelson? Yeah. Steve Gunther? Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yeah. Susan Dolan? Yeah. Janet Emerson? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yeah. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Greg, uh, Michael McDonough? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Uh, <laughs> Abstain, right? All right, so in a vote of, of 11 0 and one abstention. Motion passes. We'll move on to item E performance review. Um, again, this is very consistent with other charters. And uh, so the city administrator shall receive from the Board of Aldermen at least once annually a performance review. Each performance review shall be made. A part or made part of the confidential personal file of the city administrator.
Okay, so we have a motion on the floor and a second. Any other further discussion? Okay, Sandy, was it you that motion? And who second? Okay, who was the first? Grace, okay. Any discussion? Okay. So would the performance review be tied to the contract term? Yes. Yes, tied to the contract. As far as when the ordinance is passed, the city administrator and the co-owner? And usually it's based on what is actually written in the contract as far as the reviews. So based on the what what's in the charter and what's in the actual written contract for the city administrator, that's the things that are to be reviewed. So it's pretty clear. I guess my concern though is if that isn't done, then the ordinance would be in the city of Minnesota. Well, Ted and I kind of had this discussion last night. And again, I mean, we're not here to try to enforce anything or make something happen. But I mean, I think we need to include such language in the charter so that there's a there's an avenue for both the city administrator and the board of aldermen to respond. Yes, Tim? I think if you put it in the charter, you've already included those things about what happens to elected officials if they don't. It'll become part of the charter. If you don't do it, you're in violation of the charter. If you don't want to put it in the contract, you don't have to do that. I mean, I say you. I'm operating on this and you're on the current board. The board would not have to put that in the contract if they don't want it. I had to yield to the position that it probably should be in there. I thought it would be hard to have a large group do an evaluation on one person. But it really doesn't matter whether it's difficult or not. It's the right thing to do to remake their business. And if you put it in the charter, the board's got no choice. They have to. How much work they put into it. It's a matter of whether or not you want to require that they do it. And I think it's a matter of good business. I agree. I think it should be done every year. At least once annually. I just want to make sure that the city administrator has got his feedback at least once annually. Then, you know, we're supportive of the mayor should be held accountable. Yeah, you'd be in a tough position because we've already written that if you don't follow this charter, then it's grounds for forfeiture. And then forfeiture of the laws. Any other board discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Would you like to reread it? 5.5E, Performance Review. The city administrator shall receive from the Board of Aldermen at least once annually a performance review. Each performance review shall be made part of the confidential personnel file of the city administrator. All right, we'll take a vote. Susan Dolan? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Jim Asia? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Charlotte Wilson? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Thank you. We will now move on to... We'll move on to 5.6. This is the acting city administrator. It's pretty much worded based on the same thing that we've had for other acting positions like the acting city clerk. But it says, during a prolonged absence of our... It should be absence or...
disability of the city administrator, the Board of Aldermen shall, by a majority vote, appoint an acting city administrator based, when possible, on the city administrator's final recommendation letter. If a vacancy in the office of the city administrator occurs, the Board of Aldermen shall, by a majority vote, appoint an acting city administrator until such time as the Board of Aldermen shall, by a majority vote, appoint a new city administrator. Any discussion? It pretty much is, and it's very similar to what we've tried to write for the other positions, like you mentioned. Yes, Lisa? 5.4, acting city clerk. Is that supposed to be no, then, or an order? Say that again, please, Lisa. For the acting city clerk at 5.4, I need to go back and see if what we approved was or or. The one word we changed here. It looks like we approved or, so I just didn't have it. I missed a version of the document. Okay, we're good. All right, she'll check on that. So, we're good? We're good. All right, so we do have a motion on the floor and a second. Any other discussion? Yeah, Mark, did you have something? All right, we'll take a vote, please. 5.6, acting city administrator. During a prolonged absence or disability of the city administrator, the Board of Aldermen shall, by majority vote, appoint an acting city administrator based, when possible, on the city administrator's file recommendation letter. If a vacancy in the office of the city administrator occurs, the Board of Aldermen shall, by majority vote, appoint an acting city administrator until such time as the Board of Aldermen shall, by majority vote, appoint a new city administrator. Is that what everybody's got? If that's the case, we'll vote. Mark Moore? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Ted Bellman? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Jim Major? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Sandra Harwell? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Chairman? Yes, Ted. I have a question about the acting city clerk. Has she read this 5.6 and 5.4? Yes. I'm going to read the exception of the word for her administrator. Right. Does that solve the question? Yeah, I think so. I think she solved it, too, by looking back. We do have a word. All right. Motion carries unanimously. Anybody want to start with 5.7, city attorney? All right. I mean, let me just kind of go through. I mean, has everybody had a chance to read this section on the city attorney and maybe review it with other charters? I mean, I know that in compiling this, I did write it based on at least four other charters and the MML suggestions. So if anybody's got something that they want to add, do we need to read each one of them, or can we just vote on this whole section? Chairman? Yeah, Chairman. I'll second that. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes. Yes. Ted? Under eligibility, the last sentence points a term for that attorney. There are no, I'm presuming here, there are no penalties for such a contract or a contract attorney containing that in the insurance. I'm not looking for any. I just want to make sure I understand it correctly. You're just placing a term on there so that the contractor or employee knows what to expect. Exactly. Yes, I'm sorry. The members on the board currently is the contract with the city attorney now just two years? Does anybody know that? I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, does anybody know 
know if the contract now is just two years for the city of Sydney. I do not know currently, Sandy. I was not able to do uh, I guess I'm wondering if we're, if we're making the city administrator a three year term, should we not be looking at that for the next most important thing? <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, the only thing I can answer to that is that two years seem to be very consistent with other charters, okay. and that's the only thing that I can say to that. I, I, I would wish I knew exactly. Yeah. And it, it really doesn't say on the city website uh, what the length of term is, what the okay. city term is. <coughs> Jason? No. Good to have different terms in the city administrator. Now there's a uh, continuity in case people leave, come and go, you know. Well, that's an issue, though, I guess. Yeah, any kind of overlap so, is good. Yeah, but still, you know, we could do that. Yeah, Jim? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's a critical thing. I think what you really want is at least some continuity and you go year by year. Um, kind of takes away from that, so um, a two year term is. Or to your contract to me is it would be more appropriate, maybe even more than a three-year term of the contract because attorneys tend to want to renegotiate more. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we could always reduce it to one. I said, I said we could always reduce it to one. Uh, all right, we do have a motion to and a second to approve all these as one item. Any other discussion regarding that? Seeing none, we'll take a, a vote to read all these as one item. Let's vote on it. Are we voting on the entire thing? There was a motion. Yeah, there was a motion and a second to Are we voting on three again or voting on the whole thing? We're going to vote on the whole thing, but it will be read in its entirety. Please yell at me if I get any words wrong as we go, so I make sure I'm correct here. Well, we have to vote on the motion. We have a motion and a second. Right on the motion. Oh, okay. What just about that? We don't have to read it now. We just need to vote. Oh, sorry. And we'll read it now. I'm not confused. Okay. <laughs> so it's just voting to read it. Right. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Harwell? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Jim Azure? Yes. Susan Dolman? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Charlotte Molson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Mark Ward? Yes. Okay, now you can read it. Go ahead and read it. Okay. 5.7 City Attorney. The city shall retain the services of an attorney or law firm qualified to serve as city attorney. This, I said city attorney. The city attorney shall be appointed by majority vote of the entire board of aldermen after receiving recommendations from the city administrator. 5.7a, eligibility. The city attorney shall be a licensed member of the Missouri Bar and shall have been active been in active practice of law in the state of Missouri for at least three years immediately preceding their appointment. The requirement that such prior active law practice be in the state of Missouri may be waived by a two-thirds vote of the Board of Aldermen. The attorney or law firm appointed shall serve for a term of two years, and nothing shall preclude an attorney or law firm from serving successive terms. 5.7b, Powers and Duties. The city attorney shall serve as the chief legal advisor to the Board of Aldermen, Mayor, Administrative Staff, and all the city departments, offices, and agencies shall represent the city in all legal proceedings, and shall perform any other duties prescribed by this charter, by ordinance, by law, or as may be required of the city attorney by the Board of Aldermen, Mayor, or Administrator, City Administrator. The city attorney shall attend all Board of Aldermen meetings and shall receive notice of all meetings and special meetings. 5.7c, accountability and removal. In all respects, <coughs> excuse me, 
In all respects, except in their capacity as legal advisor to the Board of Aldermen, the City Attorney shall report to and be accountable to the City Administrator, and the City Administrator shall render an annual performance review of the City Attorney to the Board of Aldermen. The City Attorney may be removed at any time with a two-thirds majority vote of the entire Board of Aldermen. 5.7D, Compensation. The Board of Aldermen shall provide for the City Attorney's compensation. The City Attorney shall be subject to the administrative policies and procedures of the City. At the option of the City Attorney, with the concurrence of the Board of Aldermen, the City Attorney's compensation may be provided by fees and may be paid directly to such officers or to the law firm or firms of which they are members or employees. Yes, Your Honor. Do you want to voice their thoughts on that? Yeah, Lisa. We have, we've changed this previously in other sections, so we didn't say that for the reason, I assume, being that if we had a decision where the entire Board of Aldermen had to be there, what if one person was always missing here and there? We would never get the person approved. It might really slow things down. And we have, I would say we should be careful in how many people or positions, whatever it is, they have to approve with an entirety of the Board because, like I said, it might become extenuating circumstances. That's all. Any other, Jason? I just want to clarify here. So we're saying that, at least according to this that it's written now, that the entire Board doesn't have to be there to devote to a firm appointment, but the entire Board has to be there if there's a removal situation. Correct. That's correct. And that seems to be pretty consistent. I mean, the waiver of a two-thirds vote is not as, I mean, I guess it doesn't have as much weight as the actual need or possible need to remove. I mean, it seems like other charters have addressed this as when you remove something or remove somebody, it has to be the entire Board, whereas when you waive something, it seems to be not the entire Board. And I see that. I just, you know, I understand the consistency thing, too. I'm just saying that, you know, something to think about, that if you're making an appointment, I mean, hypothetically, what you're afraid of in a situation where someone's removed is that someone's removed in a way that's somewhat unethical, you know, that you aren't sure about. Well, the very same thing could happen with an appointment. You know, there could be an unethical appointment. And, you know, I'm kind of inclined, and I understand what you're saying, that, you know, the other charters have it right, but I'm kind of inclined with Ms. Nelson that, you know, I think that's something that, again, you know, protects every voice on the Board of Aldermen. And if this is something that everybody's okay with, we can always add that word, entire. I can't see much, excuse me, but I can't see much difference in appointing somebody and then taking their job away from them. I think if the city council is going to appoint them, they need to be able to step up and do the same thing that they're going to. Okay. All right. Now, Lisa, correct me if I'm wrong. Do we actually have a motion on the floor currently, or did we just read it? Okay. So, we can always change it without having to do something with a motion. Okay. 
So, if, if Charlotte, if you want to make a motion to that point, let, let's go ahead and do that. Or, actually, yeah, there's no motion. Yeah, there's no motion. Right, that's, that's Seconds. All right, now we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? We'll take a break right after the this. All right, seeing no other board discussion, we'll take a vote. I mean, on, on, no, there's no amendment. There was an original. Thank you. 